How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Today, we're discussing how much money the Yankees have in total payroll that they can allocate in free agency. Now, this is a question that has a lot of variables included in it. You know, you look at Josh Donaldson, Aaron Hicks. We'll talk about some of the money they can manage to offload, what that might look like, um, how much the, the money the team has right now in terms of, you know, after arbitration and where they were last season. You know, we'll use last season as kind of like a benchmark for, uh, what they may do this offseason. You know, they may push beyond that, but um, there's a lot of the, the money aspect in baseball is really interesting because it all really determines on do they want to go past the luxury tax threshold, the subcharges. Um, there's a 12%, a 42.5%, and then there's a 60% subcharge uh, in tax if you go over a certain number in total payroll. So uh, Hal Steinbrenner went past the first threshold last year, uh, meaning he only had to pay about 12% in tax. That's the, That was a subcharge, but this year, he may have no choice but to go beyond that. So, you know, we'll give you guys those numbers, what it's looking like right now, how much money the Yankees have to spend, what Aaron Judge's contract may, uh, you know, take up and the leftovers after that. So, you know, they're, apparently the Dodgers are now making a run at, uh, you know, Judge after getting rid of uh, Cody Bellinger and clearing about 100 mil off their books. So they have a lot more money than us. They can continue to keep spending after they sign Aaron Judge, and that's something the Yankees may not be willing to do, may not want to do. And I think that, you know, Judge said it recently, I want to go to a team that's going to, is not going to stop at me. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep bringing in uh, really good pieces. The Dodgers arguably have a better roster than the Yankees. And if they go out and sign even more star talent, you're looking at a pretty difficult situation and pretty uh, tough argument to make that Judge would stay in New York. But nonetheless, I think they do have leverage in this scenario. But Ryan, before we dive into these numbers, take a look at how much money the Yankees do really have to spend. How do you do today, my friend? Um, I'm doing all right. You know, uh, it is, I mean, we're entering kind of the, uh, hopefully the start of what should be a busy off season for the New York Yankees. Um, you know, honestly, uh, you mentioned the Yankees, uh, payroll last year, you know, they, as much as we can, uh, you know, get on house time, right? They, they spend a decent sum of money. They spent 276 million dollars in terms of their luxury tax allocation, specifically. Now their payroll, not counting with just luxury tax, just raw payrolls, more of 260, 265, somewhere in that range. Um, but the luxury tax is what matters because, as you mentioned, the thresholds, right? I believe it's 273 this year for that third tier, um, in which you get an increased tax. I think the Yankees will try to stay under that 273. Um, but it is also notable that the Yankees spent a lot of money for the first time, really, since they ran a high payroll for the first time uh, since 2019 in terms of, you know, running a payroll that's above $220 million. Um, and, and, I mean, they brought in a ton of revenue. The stadium was rocking. They crushed it on yes. You know, this team got a lot of money back when investing a lot of money in the team. Will that, you know, kind of entice Hal Steinbrenner to continue to spend money at the way he's spending money? Um, you know, I, I, as much as we can get on Hal, he is a businessman, right? He's going to do what is uh, best for his revenue. And if spending more money generated better results than, you know, sitting around 210, 220, um, what reason does Hal Steinbrenner have to not continue to spend more, right? It's the right business move, right? And the right business move is what Hal Steinbrenner is going to make. Um, whether it's the right baseball move or not is something we can discuss, uh, you know, as we go through the offseason. But one of the big pieces in this offseason is, as you mentioned, with the Dodgers potentially looking at him, Aaron Judge, right? Uh, the Yankees simply cannot afford to lose Aaron Judge on the baseball field and off the baseball field. Aaron Judge is a spectacle. I mean, how much money did this team make with the chase for 62? Uh, Aaron Judge is simply one of the most exciting players in baseball to watch. Uh, you know, one day he'll be, you know, re receiving a, a, a bounce off the wall and throwing out a runner at second and then the next day he's unloading a ball 450 feet into left field at exit velocities you didn't think were possible um and he does so routinely he does this day in and day out we can look at his 2022 season but i look back at his 2021 season that was a remarkable season as well and he was the life the heart and soul of that team uh you know when aaron judge is healthy he is simply and i'm not even gonna put into that disclaimer anymore because aaron judge is healthy uh, when Aaron Judge is on the field uh, any day, anytime he's in the lineup, he is simply the best player uh, at any given point in time for this team, and he's the player you go to watch. Everyone dreams of watching Aaron Judge hit a home run at a game they go to. Everyone wants to tune in and watch an Aaron Judge at bat, right? No one's tuning in, you know, just to watch, oh, a specific reliever or a bench bat. They're tuning in to watch Aaron Judge. Whether you're a diehard Yankee fan, whether you're a, you know, a Yankee fan who, 
doesn't really follow team as closely, whether you're just someone who's a New Yorker or someone who's trying to get into baseball, Aaron Judge is a name you know. Aaron Judge is a recognizable face. Aaron Judge walks down a street in New York City and there's going to be hundreds of people flocking at him. Uh, something that we really don't see in baseball, right? We, you know, Mike Trout, I don't know if Mike Trout could walk down the street of New York City and get recognized by hundreds of people. He definitely would get recognized by someone, uh, but it's just not the same level as Aaron Judge. So uh, this team, if they want to continue to make the money that they made last year, Aaron Judge is a big factor into it. And if the Yankees want to convince Aaron Judge that this is a place that he can win a World Series at, they're going to need to make, they're going to need to spend in other uh, areas. So I think the pressure to sign Judge because they need to, and the pressure to win with Judge. And of course, the biggest factor here, the increase in revenue they experienced when they spent more money last season. I think those three factors should uh, result in the Yankees having what is at least an expensive offseason. Whether they allocate those resources properly or not is something we'll have to wait and see this time next year. Yeah, so taking a look at the numbers, guys. Um, so I'll give you some pretext here in terms of the luxury tax threshold. Right, the luxury tax threshold I believe is at two hundred thirty-three million this year, maybe a little bit more. No, it's so two two thirty-three million for the two thousand twenty-three season. And essentially, this is how the luxury subcharges work. Right, if you spend twenty to forty million dollars over. 233 million luxury tax threshold, you have a 12% subcharge. If you spend 40 million to 60 million, you have a 42.5% surcharge the first year and 45% for every consecutive year after that. So, you know, that's the second level. The third level, which is what Steve Cohen um, blew by this past year, 60 million or more, uh, which is a 60% surcharge. So, you know, that's definitely a lot of money to accrue if you're spending more than that. But um, the Yankees fell in the 12% subcharge range last year. You know, they didn't go after a big middle infielder. They didn't really spend big on anybody. Um, they retained a lot of their own players and, you know, made a couple of moves here and there, but it wasn't crazy. Um, then you look at, you know, this season, you kind of have no choice but to go into that second tier where the 42.5% surcharge kind of lies, 40 million to 60 million above um, the luxury tax threshold. And that was, you know, obviously the, the, the second tier they didn't do last year. So last season, they spent... Um, approximately or really 265 million in active total payroll. So 265 million, um, you know, they were about, you know, 30 million over the luxury tax threshold. So, you know, this year you're looking at right now projected active total payroll of $201 million. So that's after arbitration. That's after they settled. They have already settled the Isaiah Connor falefo They avoided arbitration. They've already settled with Lou Trevino. There's a couple of guys, um, you know, guys like uh, Glaber Torres, Nestor Cortez, Clay Holmes, Wandy Peralta, Herman, Loisica, you know, Jose Trevino's in the first year of arbitration. Higashioka, they may let him walk. Lucas Licky, Michael King's in the, the, you know, first year of arbitration as well. So they have a lot of guys who they have to make decisions on right now. A lot of them are pre-arbitration as well. Those young pieces, Oswaldo Cabrera, obviously, Jose, um, you know, Oswald Peraza, Albert Abreu. Um, Scott Efros, you know, they just got Junior Fernandez. He's pre-arbitration. Devi Garcia, Luis Heal, uh, Ron Marinaccio. You know, a lot of young guys that are not going to cost much. And, you know, their arbitration guys are not going to be high money guys anyway. So uh, right now you're looking at the total projected uh, right now as 201, almost $202 million. So if you look at last year's number, you're at 265, 264. Um, you have about 65, $64 million to spend. Now, as you said, you kind of have to retain Aaron Judge. He's your best player. He makes the team go when he's not when he's not there. You know what happens? He carried that offense the second half of the year, so you have to be aware of that, and you know have to acknowledge his dominance in that in that regard. Um, you have to sign him. So let's say he takes up forty million dollars in active total payroll. That leaves you with about $15 million left to sign other players if the Yankees want to stick around where they were last year. Now, personally, I think they have no choice but to keep spending because $15 million, that's going to get you a left fielder, but you need another starting pitcher maybe. you need. They've already acknowledged blatantly they need they need bullpen support. They could use Glaber Torres. They could use some trade assets. Um, to flip guys and, and maybe bring in some other strengths and, you know, cover up some other positions. But then you have the Aaron Hicks and, you know, uh, Josh Donaldson contracts. You have 21 million for Josh Donaldson, an 8 million buyout option for next year. So that's a pretty substantial amount of money. You have 10.5 million in base salary for Aaron Hicks this upcoming season. Um, so in conjunction, you have, uh, what do you have, like $35 million, something around there. Uh, that you could save. But realistically, you're not going to offload the entire contracts of those two players. You're going to need to take on some of that contract unless you're pairing, unless you're like sending a good prospect along with them, um, which is possible for the record, but I don't think it's likely given the baggage that Donaldson has. I don't know who's going to want him. Um, 
You have IKF who, you know, may have some sort of value. We'll see what they do there, but he's going to get maybe a low level prospect in, in return, just really money clearing and getting something uh, very, very minimal uh, in exchange for him. So, you know, Ryan, when you're looking at the team right now, do you think they push past that second uh, uh, luxury tax threshold tier to the 42.5% subcharge? Um, or do you think they stay in that first tier and just be conservative? Because if they tell Aaron Judge, we're going to stay in that first year, we're not really going to spend much more than you, I think he's going to go to the Dodgers. But if they're like, we're going to sign you and then we're going to keep spending, we're, we'll have another $40 million, we'll get a left fielder, we can go get a starting pitcher, I think that will convince him to stay. Uh, but right now, I think that the Dodgers have a lot more money than us. They have probably close to $100 million to spend, and we have like 50 to 60 maybe if you if we if we kind of settle with last year's numbers so if you say we're going to match the dodgers we can we can make some aggressive plays maybe we go and make for a play for verlander or rodone or bring in another good good pitcher or whatever it might be but when you're looking at the team right now do you think how steinbender goes the more aggressive route or do you think he goes the more conservative route because that may ultimately be what determines aaron judge's decision yeah, so um, I think he's going to sit in that second tier. And my reasoning for that ties back to the to the point I made before about the Yankees generating a crap ton of revenue um, last season. More so, and I know COVID obviously affected this, but I mean, COVID shouldn't affect TV viewership. If anything, TV viewership should be higher in a COVID season because less people can go to the stadium or less people are willing to go to the stadium and more people are going to watch the games from home. Uh, to get an increase in TV viewership tells you that there is something that you need. There is there is a tangible uh, finance. There is something there, right? There is some sort of correlation between spending money and generating revenue. And I believe that piece is Aaron Judge. I, I want to focus... I really want to hammer the point home that Aaron Judge drives a lot of revenue for this team. And as you mentioned, you know, if the Dodgers are in this thing. If the Yankees and Dodgers are offering similar contracts, the Dodgers show a greater willingness to spend. Right now, I would look at the Dodgers and the Yankees and I'd say, which team is more, which team with Aaron Judge becomes World Series favorites? That's the Los Angeles Dodgers, right? So if you're the Yankees, you can't just sign Judge and tell him, all right, throw away an opportunity to win a World Series in LA and come here. And we really won't do much else outside of signing you. Um, he's buddy buddy with Rizzo, and I think that's a strong connection there. But you don't just sign because your friend is there, right? You can make for go become friends with Freddie Freeman, go become friends with Wookie Betts. You know what I mean? Uh, I promise you, you'll still, you know, it's not like you know, it's not like you lose friends based on who you sign and don't sign with. Uh, you know, there are plenty like Tyler Wade still remain close with Aaron Judge, and Tyler Wade has is bouncing around from organization to organization. So again, I don't view it as something that the Yankees can simply just say, we brought back Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo likes Aaron judge and Aaron judge is cool with Anthony Rizzo. So he's going to come back. And that's why no, the Yankees have to spend in other areas. As you mentioned with clearing payroll, um, they have to move IKF. They absolutely have to. And you should not be taking any of the money back for him. If you pay a single dime of that $6 million, then why did you tender him, right? Tendering him would have now made no sense. Uh, so I imagine that they believe they can move him without paying a single dime of that $6 million. As for Donaldson and Hicks, Don Donaldson's contract, I know we're not going to clear out $25 million, as you mentioned. Same with Hicks. Not going to clear out all $10 million in terms of the uh, financial commitment for 2023. But out of that $35 million, if you move $20 million of that, Right. So tw if you if you eat 15 million or let's say you even if you're able to move, you know, half of that, let's you know, that is still a substantial uh, swing in your favor. And the, you know, Donaldson's contract or Donaldson as a player, I think is harder to move on his own than Hicks because Hicks is at least an OK. Is it like I think a league average left fielder is fair to say. And you would probably only have to eat like two or three million dollars of that a year to really get a team to bite. I mean, it's a cost controlled outfielder for seven to eight million dollars a year who's going to at least provide you fourth outfielder value. Donaldson is a big time, as you mentioned, the off the field stuff, the, you know, the, the there's rum, <laughs> there were rumblings back in Minnesota, you know, after uh, Donaldson. Donaldson was traded that the clubhouse was better, right? And kind of hinting at the idea that Donaldson was not a good thing for that clubhouse. There were reports back in Toronto that he would bull he would kind of haze and bully a lot of rookies in ways that made them uncomfortable. Uh, so there is a, there is an off the field uh, sort of track record with Donaldson that may not make him very enticing, especially for a young clubhouse. You know, you would look to move him to a rebuilding team because maybe that team is willing to take on 12 to $13 million for a flyer for Josh Donaldson. But is that the type of guy you want around your rookies? Is that, the is that the type of guy, the type of veteran that's going to guide them? Or is he going to more so, uh, you know, 
chastise them and make them feel uncomfortable in the clubhouse. Uh, I think these are real questions you're going to have to ask yourself if you're another organization taking on Josh Donaldson. Uh, and I, do I think he gets moves? Yes. Is it is it hard for me to? Um, is it? I, I just have a hard time imagining the Yankees can keep this guy on the roster. You know, even if you like, it's just, it's really tough for me to imagine how the Yankees could keep him on the roster next year. He is wildly unpopular in the fan base. He's a wildly ineffective hitter, uh, and he doesn't run the base as well. He's a great defender, but I think you can get that out of DJ LeMay, who put up eight defensive runs saved and four outs above average in under 400 innings at third base, um, and I think is a better hitter as well. Uh, especially for this team, you know, better contact, better walking. Uh, they hit within three home runs of each other. So the power is not dramatically in Donaldson's favor. Uh, so ultimately, if this team can move Josh Donaldson, which I hope they can still kind of on the fence about that, um, the possibilities are endless, right? So again, this is a team that can have, that has money to move around, has money to shuffle around. Glibber Torres is at least a positive asset. So if they do want to move off of him, they're going to get something good back for him because he's actually a good baseball player and he's pretty young, easy to extend. Um, I, I just look at it as this team needs to spend. This team needs to be, you know, at the forefront of the free agent market. This team needs to spend big. I've mentioned this on my Twitter. The Yankees can't just bring back Aaron Judge and make that their splash signing. The Yankees need to bring back Aaron Judge and make a second move that really elevates this team and really, you know, takes this team to the next level. I don't care what position it's at. I don't care who it is. I care that it's a play. Well, I kind of care who it is, but I, I don't care which top free agent or top trade target it is the Yankees need to get a significant addition outside of Aaron judge for next season and establish themselves as the heavy favorites for the American league for 2023, because you can try to upset the Astros and be a team that's worse than the Astros and beat them. We've seen playoff upsets before. Um, but unfortunately that's not a reliable way to win baseball games, right? You can't go into every postseason and say, well, we're the underdog and it's a crap shoot. So we'll go in and just win. No, if you're favored to win, you're more likely to win. And if you repeat the postseason outcomes, if you repeat going into the postseason as the top seed, you'll end up with multiple titles, and multiple pennants. Look at the Astros. How many times have they been the one seed going into the American league playoffs? Or how many times have they been the favored to got the favored team in an ALCS matchup? They've gone into multiple ALCSs as the favored team. They've gone to what four world series at this point. They've won two of them. That's how you that's how you win. You don't go into it as the underdog, right? Those are the teams like the Nationals or you know the Braves who or the Braves at least are a sustainable winner, but the Nationals are a one and done team. That team is horrible now. They won a World Series and they're terrible. You don't even, I mean, what are they? Uh, you know, the Red Sox have built one great winner, but not a sustainable winner. They haven't gotten back to the World Series since. They've made one postseason since 2018. Uh, you know, the Royals way back when they were winning, they have been god awful since then. You need to build a sustained winner. You need to go out and consistently be the, be the best team in the American League. And part of that is spending the most money in the American League. Yeah, you want to hear some interesting news that just dropped? You might actually enjoy this, Ryan. So according to Andy Martino, the Yankees have actually requested medical information on Jacob deGrom, um, which is a very interesting piece of news. So with that being said, maybe they are looking at some big name pitchers. I mean, looking at asking for his medical records, is that something? I would call that something. I would call that even if it's doing due diligence, that means they're looking. That means they're interested in that top end, uh, you know, uh, market for the starting pitchers. They already connected with Justin Verlander. Um, you know, we'll see what happens to Carlos Rodon. But Degrom man coming off an injured season, maybe they can do a similar deal to Degrom to to Verlander last year. Maybe they can sign him to a two year deal, high money, a player option for the second season, and then you have Garrett Cole and Jacob Degrom. And if Degrom is healthy, and you know what he can do in the postseason. I don't I don't know how you lose games in the playoffs with those two guys as your starting pitchers. I mean, if you have even half an offense, you can win games. And I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, how do you feel about that kind of that news coming out as we're podcasting? That's fun. Um, yeah, look, uh, am I, I I would I rather prefer a little bit more insurance health wise with a guy like Verlander or maybe, you know, go out and explore the offensive side of the market? Absolutely. But is Jacob DeGrom, am I going to sit here and say, oh, man, the Yankees got Jacob DeGrom? What idiots? No, if the Yankees are able to make a splash shining like that, I mean, this team is, I mean, the, the pitching staff, Garrett Cole, Jacob DeGrom, Luis Severino, Nestor Cortez, Frankie Montas. I mean, you you're not you're not losing. Uh, and I know a lot of people are going to point to the Mets and say, well, they had Scherzer and DeGrom and they, what they do, losing the wild card. I think this team, if they have Aaron, Aaron Judge is unfor not unfortunate, is very much, mu so much better than any offensive piece that 2022 Mets team had. And this offense would be better than that 2022 Mets offense. The bullpen's also significantly deeper. Um, so I don't care how the, again, I don't care who the star is. I don't care how the Yankees acquire that star. 
go out and get a second star, put him with Aaron Judge, and let's establish ourselves as the top dogs going into the uh, 2023 season. Absolutely, guys. But I'd love to hear your perspectives below. Some big news breaking as we're talking here and, you know, taking a look at the, the Yankees salary and, and the payroll right now. Um, you know, a lot of numbers, a lot of information, but ultimately wanted to give you guys some some insight into what that's looking like and how much flexibility they have. If they want to push into that second tier, they can make two big moves. They can go and get a DeGrom. They can go and get a judge. Um, this is possible. They also need a left fielder. Keep that in mind. So could be Masataka Yoshida, could be Andrew Benintendi. You know, we're still kind of waiting to hear what that happens there. But at the end of the day, guys, keep this in mind. The Yankees, it's going to be a lot easier to move on from Aaron Hicks's deal than it is going to be to move on from Josh Donaldson's deal. But if they go and sign a player and they push some of that money to next year, that Josh Donaldson $21 million will be gone, right? So you can directly allocate that to DeGrom. If you go in and you pay a little bit more uh, this year and go into that luxury tax threshold, that second subcharge uh, bracket, you know, it might come down next season. So we'll see how the Yankees go about this. This is definitely going to be an interesting situation, how they manipulate the numbers and try to, um, you know, figure out what they're going to do here. But they have so much youth, Anthony Volpe, Peraza, and Alto Cabrera filling three starting roles, plus a lot of youth on the starting rotation and in the bullpen. A lot of cheap deals. You have a lot of cheap contracts on this roster, my friend. So I think they can afford to spend elsewhere personally, especially with a lot of big bucks coming off the books in the future. So, you know, love to your perspectives below. As always, make sure to drop those in the YouTube comments. As always, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Mm -hmm.